Hey guys, a few weeks ago, uh, as many of you know, if you follow me on any of my other social channels, Instagram, Facebook, the group, and my page, I had posted a fundraiser uh, that I did for my sister, actually, uh, like I said, a couple weeks ago. Um, actually, it's been probably over a month ago by now. But uh, the fundraiser was to help raise some, raise some uh, funds to help her and my brother-in-law and my niece out. Uh, my sister was it's going through a battle with cancer right now that we found out just, uh, I think, on Valentine's Day. So a lot of friends and family have been pitching in different ways, uh, different types of uh, support, you know, emotional support, physical support, helping run errands, do things to help them out, as well as some financial support as well. Because as many of you know, there's a lot that goes into when you battle in cancer. There's a lot of unexpected expenses that come up, as well as the expected expenses that come up. So uh, just a lot to handle, and so I wanted to use what I had, which was my candle business, to help out in some way. So I did put together a fundraiser. It went very well. Probably not done. I'm, I'm going to do some more, I think. Anyways, the purpose of this video was to show you what it's like to have to do a large-scale production, or at least a semi-large-scale production, uh, for a lot of candles. In this particular situation, I had about 500 candles to make in a couple days. And uh, it ended up being about 140 orders within the first few days. So a lot of work I had to do within that short period of time. I recorded as much as I could of various stages of this process to kind of show others out there what it looks like to have to kind of scale up rather than just making a couple candles at a time like most of us start with. And a lot of you ask, you know, when you scale up and need to make more candles at once, kind of, you know, wh what that process looks like for me. Um, this is not really the typical process because I'm still not in my new workshop yet. I'm still kind of using an ad lib workshop at the moment, but I did record parts of it and this is going to cover uh, prepping and actually making as well as, of course, pouring, trimming, labeling, and then even packaging and, and uh, shipping out a lot of those orders. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If more than anything, it's just kind of a walk through and I'm going to do a voiceover to kind of explain what I'm doing at different parts of the video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. And I should mention, as I always do, thank you all for being here uh, to this video and to this channel in general. If you are new, my name is Wade. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn uh, and also, of course, this YouTube channel. So if you are interested in any more content about candle making, running a candle business and related information, uh, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and let's get going. And I'll kind of show you what it looked like as I made about 500 candles over a couple days. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so this is just gonna be a really casual video. Um, I'm gonna talk about some of what's going on in the video as well as just some general discussion things, whatever comes to my mind. Uh, like I said, it's very laid back and casual. So a lot of this is, most of this is gonna be um, time lapse. And so I'll have it sped up just because I literally had almost uh, 60 hours of recorded footage. So it's taken me a few weeks just to edit it down to make it viewable for you and not overly long. So. Here I'm just obviously staging out uh, the first probably 40 candles, 50 candles there. Um, there's another side here as well that you can't see, but um, this is really just me getting started. Um, and what I'm doing there, referencing the orders on the laptop there, and just gonna kind of divide out uh, the first few batches of candles. And I tried to do as many of the same scent at the same time, just to make it easier on myself. But uh, what you saw there as far as jars, I ended up doing that amount by about 10 times 10. So once the jars are laid out for the first uh, few batches, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and add the wick stickers to all the wicks. Um, I don't have any issues with his wick stickers. I know some people use other methods, but these have always worked well for me. As long as your jars are clean and you properly place them, um, I've never had any issues with them. Uh, here you're going to see me using this cool little wick setter device that I have. I've talked about this a lot in other videos and I've linked it um, in some of the videos as well. Again, there are other methods to do this. I just find this pretty quick and easy. The device doesn't work on all jars though, so uh, you just kind of have to use what you can. Uh, but it does a good job of placing the wicks really centered and uh, just faster. So I, I really enjoyed this. And like I said, I, I'm doing this in batches. Um, I'm, I'm preparing for around oh five to seven batches at once um, and then each batch within each pitcher i can do eight candles at a time so i keep two pitchers going at all times so i'm always actively working on 16 candles at any given moment which you'll see coming up here in a few minutes but uh, in short i i do kind of about 70 candles and then i take a little break and ran a recoup put out new jars prepare all the jars and then i start again uh, so here I'm just adding, uh, it, this is not what I normally do. I don't normally put on the wick center holders, uh, the wick holders ahead of time. 
Uh, and it's because I tend to make a mess if I try to pour around them. And I actually do make a mess. And so after this first attempt, um, I, uh, I just wanted to try it a little different this time. I thought maybe it'd speed up the production. It did not. So I end up, uh, after the first batch of pouring and cleaning up, I, uh, I go back to my normal method, which is just placing the wick holders on after I pour the candles. It's just a lot easier for me to do it that way. You don't have to be as precise when you're pouring. It's a lot easier. So here I'm working on the first batch, first, uh, First set of candles here. I, I don't recall which ones they are. I, I had six different scents that I did for this fundraiser. And so I don't know which ones I'm working on at any given time. Like I said, uh, about three to four days of recorded footage I'm going through here. So got the wax out. I'm using a new melting tank. I tried out and I really, really, really like it. So I've linked that in the description um, of a few of my more recent videos. So check it out. Uh, add the oil, get it mixed up. I'm not using any dye in these. So uh, these are fairly straightforward to make other than, you know, I'm just following the recipe that I had worked out and tested. Um, if you're curious what I use to manage my recipes and all of my materials, it's called Crafty Base. I have a video on that. I'll try to remember to link that, but it's great. Um, it's kind of a lifesaver for me. I don't know that I could work without it at this point. I'm so ingrained in using it. I've used it for probably six or seven years now. But anyways, I uh, just making those first few batches. You can see I'm pouring eight at a time, switching pitchers, and I just keep going. And once I make it through those first five or six batches of candles. I just, I go ahead and re-prepare more jars and, and keep going from there. Um, I show a lot of footage of kind of pouring the candles just because I don't know about anyone else, but I find it extremely satisfying. <laughs> it's just something I think is kind of cool to watch. Um, it, I really like doing it with the colored candles, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So. Um, so yeah, I tried my best to edit and cut these videos down, uh, th all this footage down to make it something enjoyable, not overly long, but still long enough where we could chat. Um, so here I am just go ahead and preparing the next set of jars while the other ones are, are kind of settling up on the other tables. Uh, that way there's really no downtime. Uh, I worked for about two days straight to do all of this. Making the candles is not even the longest part though. Uh, the longest part is packaging and shipping them. It's not even close. 80% uh, of the time I spent doing this fundraiser was on packaging and shipping the orders. Um, you know, once you get a process down for making the candles, it goes pretty smoothly and it's just rinse and repeat. Here I'm removing the wick holders and going back and just trimming the wicks up to about a quarter inch. Again, a great little wick trimmer to do that. There's my little boy. Decided to come down and help. Hey. Dad, yeah. why did you not use the wood ones on these ones? The wood ones? I don't know what if he's talking about wood wicks or what, but he loves helping out. He wants to do it all the time. But And here, uh, <laughs> not something we're actually using in the candles. We're just teaching him. Uh, I'm just trying to teach him how to measure some of these things out by tearing the scale and measuring in small grams. So he was having fun. So just a, just a small little part I wanted to include here because he thought it was awesome and he, he wanted to be part of the video. So I prepared a whole nother uh, large batch of new jars, new wicks, and the wicks vary based off of the oils I'm making. So that's why I try to do certain recipes at a time together. And we're pouring those ones now. Again, I don't recall which are which, and they all look the same because uh, I'm not dying any of them, but there are six different scents in total. I just love watching, watching pouring the candles. It's just, oh, it's satisfying as my middle son would say. So I really like these wick holders. Um, I've used them in most of my videos. However, I have recently tested some others. Um, and they're, I really, I've had a lot sent to me to test and review. And for the most part, I've liked them all. So it's really a matter of preference. It just works for whatever works for you, your size jars. But uh, I, I just really, I have so many of these that when I'm making so many candles, these are my go-to for now. But uh, again, I'm always looking for new ways to improve and new things to use and new businesses to support. I'm doing kind of a quick time lapse of, lapse of watching that uh, those candles start to firm up from the bottom. I think it looked neat, so I kept that in there too. But as you can see, with the process, if you have a, you have a process outlined and kind of defined to follow, it's easy just to always stay busy and be able to keep moving, keep working uh, without too much downtime. 
Here I'm just removing uh, all the wick holders again. You know, you see several other candles there. While I was doing the fundraiser, of course, I had regular orders coming in, so I was trying to <laughs> trying to get those into the fold as well. That was difficult, keeping track of all the current normal orders coming in along with the fundraiser. Uh, so anything that's not in those uh, standard white jars there are not part of the fundraiser, but orders I had to continue to work on as well. Well, so I, uh, I cut the rest of the footage of me making the candles because that would have been a lot of footage. So here I'm just cutting to go ahead and starting to label. Um, all the candles are, are made at this point for the most part. Um, and I am just starting with the warning labels. And I'm going again by this, keeping the batches together. That way I don't, you don't know, accidentally mess up the product labels. The warning labels are all the same for these. And I often make my own warning labels depending on the jar and the candle that, that I'm making. But in this case, I use just some... Uh, default standardized warning labels. These are the labels that I made for the fundraiser. I don't normally do labels like this. You'll see, you've probably seen some, some of my other labels, but I really do like how these came out and I thought they were perfect for the fundraiser itself. So they are just uh, clear and they look good against the white. And the only difference on each of these labels is the bottom uh, where I have the scent listed. Uh, like I said, there's six different scents. And I, be I believe they were conifer pine, cotton creek, Strawberry Guava, Vanilla Pina, uh, Crackling Birch, and Seaside Cove. Those were the six that I did for this fundraiser. So I'm just putting the labels on and uh, you know, putting the lids on, setting them aside. Um, this is when things started getting interesting. I was trying to figure out the best way to do this. Do I label them all or do I label some, then package? Uh, it, it just, I was trying to be the most efficient possible because I knew this was going to be the longest part. It just takes so long to get everything. I mean, yes, it takes a long time to make candles sometimes. Yes, it takes a long time to label, but it's it's really about getting a good process to you so you can stay efficient. And then because when you get to the packaging and, and, and shipping out, that just is time consuming, especially in this case, because I ended up doing a, a little bit of different packaging than I, than I do for some of my normal sales. Here, uh, again, this isn't part of the fundraiser. I'm just had to make a batch of uh, some hazelnut coffee candles so just went ahead and included a little bit of that footage because you know why not might as well show some other footage that i was working on as well um, but then we're going to just kind of skip through here i'm not going to show each and every one of these and that's that's how those turned out those are more of what my normal labels look like, but I have a lot of labels, different types of labels, depending on the candle line that I'm, I'm using. But uh, And then here's a batch of wood wicks I had to make. I do a lot of wood wicks as well. Um, they're mostly all, all in these jars, these black jars, or the same size jars, but in white. Um, some are Christmas, and, and the black ones are kind of all season. Um, and you'll see me wiping down the jar a little bit with the rag. I, I think you probably all... No, I'm just doing that to make sure I've got good, clean surface to attach the label to and, you know, remove any fingerprints, things like that, the best that I can. Some of these jars pick up fingerprints real easy, so it's it's pretty tough, but uh, that's what that one looks like. Um, and those, there's, there's the white ones I was talking about. I don't remember which ones these were. I want to say, I want to say blue spruce, maybe. I don't remember what the order was that came in, but we'll see here in a second. Yeah, blue spruce, so... And these ones get a black lid for now, and I'm always working to improve these ones as well, but uh, there's not too many of these. I think I did about 15 wood wicks um, that came in while I was working on the fundraiser. Yeah, and then we will uh, kind of get back to... Oh, um, I actually had some... I told you I had Cracklin' Birch in the fundraiser, but I was also getting a lot of Cracklin' Birch orders uh, my, of my standard Cracklin' Birch candles. Uh, it's one of my most popular candles and scents. I just sell tons of it. Um, it's, a, it's a great scent. You know, it's a great burning candle. Just It's just very popular. So I'm, I'm always making and selling a lot of that. So I figured I'd include that as well. But uh, like I said, I sold the same scent in the fundraiser. But ironically, it was chosen like the second least amount of all the fundraiser scents. Although in my standard candles, it's one of my top sellers. So I don't really know what that means <laughs> or how to interpret that. But the fundraiser, I did add four new scents. And so that might've been why people were just trying new things. So that's probably the reason. 
So here I'm just applying some more labels and I just intermittent footage of this. I didn't want to bore you with all the, the footage of, of doing this because I, again, it was just hours and hours and hours and hours of footage. But you can see all the progress we've made looking at that back row and how many candles there are finished. And it extends all the way to, to my left as well, which you can't really even see in, in the footage. But a lot of candles, that was for sure. But it's really not the amount of candles that's difficult. It's the amount of orders. Uh, each order is a lot of work. Um, especially when it comes time to packaging and shipping. And I would say about 95% of my orders were shipped orders, um, you know, from all over the country. There were some international ones as well, but I did have a, a good, decent amount of local pickup options as well. So you'll see towards the end of the video here in a little bit, I'm packaging up some orders just for local pickup. And uh, I'll, sh I'll even show you in the laptop kind of what that looks like. I use Shopify and they give you an option for local pickup. And, uh, but yeah, there was, there was probably about 20 of those orders that uh, people scheduled with me just to come pick up at their convenience. And here you can see after I wrapped them in, uh, you know, a little bit of bubble wrap, then I wrapped them in this black, put on my label. It looks really nice, I think. And then I, I double box everything. So I put them in their own tight container like that, as I'm trying to show you there. And then once that is done, I will, uh, I have a process here, so I actually have two packing slips. One is to include for them, and the other one is to make notes on for me. Uh, I mark it complete. I put on the weight and the box size so that I can mass print all my labels, shipping labels together. Uh, it's just, again, another way of being efficient. So once I have the, the box made or complete for the individual candles, I, then I put them in a second box for shipping. I have never had a candle break in my life during shipping. And I think part of the reason for that is the attention to detail and the extra time I put uh, and the extra effort that I put into packaging my candles. I've had a lot of people send me candles that once they arrive, they're broken. And then it's usually because they're just in a padded envelope or uh, they're not double boxed or they just don't have enough packing material around them. And carriers are not careful with their boxes. Putting fragile on your boxes isn't going to help either. In fact, I'm convinced that unfortunately some people when they see fragile just tend to be even rougher with the boxes, unfortunately. So I don't do anything like that. I just do what I can to protect my product the best that I can in transit. And this is what I do. Um, and it works, it works great. So there you see that I'm marking that complete. I've weighed that box off to the side, which you can't see. I'm putting the order number on the box real small. And then I put the weight, set it aside. And then later, you know, once I have about a dozen or so, I'll come back and print all those shipping labels together add the shipping labels to each box and set those aside. And then I move on to like another 10 or dozen uh, to, to package up. So that's just my process. Everyone does it differently. When I'm in the finished workshop, I'll have a more streamlined process, but uh, I did what I could for now. And it went, it went really well overall, although it wasn't the greatest setup. Um, I did make it work. So here you can see, I'm just looking at the next order. I've got the orders pulled up in front of me along with the packing slips. And then I'm just all, all the product that I made for the fundraisers just sitting back there behind it. And I'm just grabbing what I need for each order. And here we go, just in super speed motion, wrapping them up again. Um, with the mes method of the double box method, uh, you really don't need a ton of packaging or bubble wrap around the individual items that are going in the box together. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like this. I put a one sheet of bubble wrap, I wrap them in the tissue paper, label them, and then they're so snug and tight in that inner box that that's the protection is that that first box. It's the, then you put it in another larger box with packing peanuts around it, and that's what's adding so much protection. If you're not using a double box method, you are going to want to use definitely more bubble wrap or more protection than I am using on those individual candles because they won't have the protection of a inner box if that makes sense. So again, it totally depends on the size of the order, what was ordered. Um, this was a fundraiser that came in sets of two. So most orders were a set of two or four or six or eight. So I had a very good idea how I was gonna package all these up. Um, I had boxes that hold two perfectly, some that hold four perfectly. And then of course they go in a larger box. But for standard orders, sometimes you just gotta get creative depending on what was ordered. Once you do it long enough, and you've been do once you've been doing this long enough, you you'll start to learn uh, certain box sizes and and what works best for you when you're shipping out an order. 
Uh, but that just takes time and you can kind of plan it all out and you can try to plan for all the possible scenarios but that gets a little difficult so just do your best and then if you're throwing a curveball with a strange order that's got like you know seven candles and three melts and I, I don't know something that's just not standard then you just got to get creative and figure out the best way to package and ship that so this is one of those boxes here that holds four of these perfectly which again is the inner box so once they're in there nice and snug I seal that up and then it goes into another larger box, which apparently I skipped on uh, on this part, but no reason to show you the same thing over and over and over too much. As long as we had enough time just to have a good casual conversation and you get to see a little time lapse of what this looked like. Again, I'm having to skip quite a bit or you would have been watching a video that took three days, which would not have been fun for anyone. I will tell you though that editing this down took a mind-boggling amount of time. So uh, it, it's, it takes a long time to go through that much footage and figure out what to keep and what not and then piece it all together. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, or at least it, and if, if you didn't, just lie to me and tell me you did. So it makes me feel better about the amount of time <laughs> that I put into this. So again, there's those four uh, showing you once again that they fit nicely in. There's that first box that they're all nicely snugged into. Um, that's kind of the presentation box, basically. Uh, and then it goes in what I consider the shipping box. So there's packing peanuts in there, cover it up, seal it up. Same thing as before, you'll see me kind of mark it as complete, put on the outer labels. I weigh it off to the side and then uh, set it aside until I'm ready to print the labels. Here, I believe I'm gonna just show you a couple examples of the uh, local pickup orders. So I. I I think I'm done with the boxes. You don't have to keep watching more of that, but you'll see I'm doing another quick order here. Again, pretty standard for most of these orders. It was kind of the same process as far as wrapping up each individual item. None of that changed for this fundraiser. In fact, most of my orders are the exact same way. I just, you, it's best to find a process you can repeat and stick to it, just make everything more efficient for you. But it's not always possible and it can be struggle sometimes, so. Especially if you have a lot of different size candles, uh, that, that can be challenging. But there I've got some little bags. This is just a two candle order. So place them in there, put a label on the bag, put in their packing slip, just like normal, set it aside and it's ready to go. Um, those are the bags I use for two candles or two candles and some melts, something like that. Kind of your smaller or smaller to average size order. Um, but then you'll see, you know, I've got some larger bags too that are real nice and they're for and they'll hold up to like 12 candles or something like that and they're nice and durable i think that might be what's getting ready to go in uh, what these are getting ready to go into you know i'm not the best at packaging and wrapping things up it's not necessarily my strength but i've learned over time and i think they i think they end up looking pretty well they're pretty good there's that uh, larger bag i was talking about and i get these from uline but you can get them other places as well uline's not the cheapest for me for shipping so i have to really consolidate my orders Real quick there, I was talking, but that was me showing an example, and feel, feel free to go back and look at that again, but that was uh, showing an example of what a local pickup order looks like in Shopify. You just mark it complete, and it marks it as fulfilled or waiting pickup, and then once they do pick it up, you mark it as picked up, and it shows that the order is complete. And that was just a few quick screenshots. Feel free to check those out again as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's my beautiful sister there with myself. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, I I didn't want to post this uh, video earlier, nor did I really want to talk about the fundraiser on the channel so much because I didn't want anyone to feel like I was trying to sell anything to you on the channel. So um, some of you knew about the fundraiser because you're part of my other social channels, but I did want to put this video up after the fact because I just thought it was a good video there's a lot of interesting things to check out if you're interested in what it looks like to have to make and package and ship a lot of candles so that is it just kind of created a, a great opportunity to create a video and show you a little bit of behind the scenes of what that looked like so again thank you all for your patience over the last few weeks i've been awfully busy and not posting as much as i normally would but anyways thank you all for watching this i do hope you enjoyed it um, maybe found some little tips and tricks and something useful out of it but if nothing else maybe a little bit of entertainment. Feel free to check out any other videos on the channel. I'll have one listed here for you to see, as well as uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already and interested in more content uh, based around candle making and running a candle making business. And we will see you next time. Thanks.